Today we're taking a look at the candy stripe hogfish. It's pretty, but at about $100, there's a couple things you need to know about it. Well, we actually feed Extreme to our fish in store. We also recommend it to all of our customers. It is an excellent food, brings out the color, makes them more vibrant. It's the food I feed. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and today we're going to be talking about the Candy Stripe Hogfish. It's got a couple of other names. It's also known as the Pacific Red Stripe, the Masati, or the Black Spot Hogfish. And this is a gorgeous fish. Uh, it's expensive. Typically you'll find it for about $100. So uh, a couple of things that you might want to know about it. Let me give you a little bit of background on this fish. Of course, uh, I was working on my FinCast on the aquacultured yellow tank. Uh, which were on display publicly for the first time at the Global Pet Expo in Orlando uh, here in 2016. And in the tank with these aquacultured yellow tanks that I'm taking all this video of, I see this beautiful hogfish. And I knew it was a hogfish. I wasn't too familiar exactly with what kind it was. So I talked with Dave Parks from Seagrist Farms, and he explained that this is the candy stripe hogfish, uh, which is, I think, the most common name out there. Although when you Google around, you do find Pacific Red Stripe and the other things that I mentioned as well. So I asked him uh, a little bit about how to keep this fish, and here's what he had to say. Well, it is, it is commonly referred to as a candy stripe. Um, it's also referred to as a Masuda hogfish. Uh, it's a great little fish. It's um, just kind of recently become a little bit more available to, to hobbyists. Uh, it's not an inexpensive fish. A hobbyist could probably expect to pay just under 100 bucks for one of these guys. Um, but they don't get real big, which makes them a great aquarium fish because they're tankable. They don't really nip on polyps too much, so they can be... They can be reef compatible with caution if you know what you're doing and you know what you're keeping and you don't mind them plucking off one of your shrimp here or there. Uh, but overall, it makes a really, really colorful addition to uh, a Fowler-style aquarium or a reef safe, uh, a reef tank aquarium. Um, they're not really bashful, which is one of the reasons why they're as popular as they are. And they don't, they don't hide too much, so you actually get to enjoy them, which is nice because some fish, once you put them in the tank, you see them from the time it takes for them to get from the top of the tank into the rocks and then you never see them again. Uh, they're moderately aggressive, uh, you know, probably going to be a little bit more conspific and aggressive, um, basically aggressive towards other fish of similar color and similar shape, uh, but they can be kept compatible with other species, no problem. Uh, they'll enjoy frozen mysis, frozen brine, um, and probably even take to some of the pelleted or prepared dried foods as well. Dave's explanation and what I found from doing a little bit of research is all pretty consistent that this is a, a, a not only a gorgeous fish, uh, if you do want to have more than one of them in your aquarium, uh, you have to introduce them at the same time as they are somewhat territorial. Also what I found, and this wouldn't surprise you so much, is that you've, you do need a fairly large aquarium. I'm going to say you don't want to put these in anything smaller than a 50 gallon aquarium. And you do need a lot of rock work and hiding places because this is an active fish and it's only comfortable if it feels like it has some place to go. Of course the upside is it's a very active fish, so it's in and out of the rocks all the time, which I think is one of the more engaging activities uh, that you can have in your fish tank. Uh, sort of John's rule number one is that a fish swimming in and out of the rocks is more interesting than a fish swimming back and forth in front of the rocks. I uh, just find that that makes the aquarium more engaging and the fish kind of comes and goes and, and it gives you an opportunity to uh, let your eye scan the tank and maybe look at something else and then come back to this fish. So I always like a fish that's, that's active in terms of being in and out of the rock. And one other thing that I have found in reading several of the forums is that this is a fish that likes to jump and you'll need a glass top on your aquarium. A lot of people use what we call egg crate uh, on the aquarium and there are several instances of uh, this fish jumping through the egg crate and obviously that's not that's not a good thing uh, you don't want to lose the fish because you want to take care of it and if you've spent a hundred dollars on a fish and it winds up you know, on the floor uh, and you discover it that way that's that's not good either so beware you will you will need a glass top this is a fish that is famous for jumping as are most of the wrasses uh, and and also uh, the hogfish which are sort of wrasse cousins so there you go there is a look at the candy stripe hogfish uh, you heard me mention my uh, story my fin cast on the first aquacultured yellow tangs which is the first time after decades of research that scientists have been able to raise these yellow tangs in captivity there's more and more out on the internet about those right now but I have uh, 
to my knowledge, the exclusive video as of as of this posting, uh, exclusive interview with Chad Callen, who is the scientist at uh, the Oceanic Institute in Hawaii who figured out how to do it. And so uh, I'll, I'll put a place here where you can click and you can check that out as well. So uh, and also uh, in addition to the marine fish species profiles that we have here, there's lots of other stuff going on on the marine side of the hobby. And I also do uh, planted tanks and fin casts on um, uh, other species of fish, uh, cichlids, very popular here on Fincasters, and we've got a whole section devoted to cichlids, so please click around. I'm sure you'll find something that you like. In the meantime, I just want to say thanks for viewing. Please do leave me a comment. I love it when you tell me what you think of the Fincast. If you want to make suggestions or add to the discussion, uh, I always appreciate that. And if you don't have time to comment or you don't have anything to say, I can understand that, but please give me a thumbs up. That helps me out. It helps the video out and makes YouTube show it to more people, and, and that's always a good thing if you're a YouTuber. So I do appreciate you uh, giving me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.